So a few other cases with adding these rationals together. Sometimes when we rationalize a denominator, it allows us to combine like terms. Because in our final answer, that quotient, we need to have rational denominators. So let's take a look at this first one. Root 3, he already has a rational denominator. What, it, what could we write it over? 1 without changing anything. But over here, I have square root of 3 down below. And I'm going to work on the inside. What do I need to multiply 3 by to get a perfect square down there? 3, and whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. So what are we looking at? I'm adding root 3 plus the square root of 3 over what value is coming out of here? 3, rational denominator. Square root of 9 is 3. And now, what about these two radicals? Do we have the same radicands? Yes, because this 3, this 1 third, is on the outside of that radical. It's not contained underneath the entire thing like it was before. So, I can factor out root 3 from both of these pieces. If I take root 3 out of my first term, what am I left with? 1. And if I take root 3 out of my second term, what am I left with? 1 third. Okay, and if you can see that this one has a coefficient 1, and I'm adding 1 and 1 third to get there, we can kind of forgo that step. But, what do we need in order to combine these two? We need to have common denominators. So how else could we represent 1 with a denominator of 3? So I need to multiply it by a factor of 3 over 3. So how many factors of root 3 do I have? I've got 3, 4 thirds. And typically, we go ahead and write our coefficient on the front, so we don't have to write parentheses, indicating that it's not contained within the radical. So go ahead and take the second one, rationalize the denominators, and see if you can combine them together. So on the inside of the first term, what do we need to multiply 3 by to get us to a perfect square? Same story as what we were working with over here. 3 over 3. And we'll take it in parts. Over here, 3 fifths. What do we need to multiply 5 by? to get us to a perfect square, 5 over 5. So what do we have coming out? I've got root 15 over 9, and we can evaluate that denominator, get a rational. And over here, I've got root 15 over 25. So evaluating those, I've got root 15 all over 3, and root 15 all over what? And we can combine those like terms now, since our radicands match exactly. So I'm adding one-third and one-fifth. I've got one-third a factor of root 15 and one-fifth of a factor of root 15. We need common denominators to be able to combine those together. And our LCD between 3 and 5 is 15. So this side needs to be multiplied by what? 5 over 5, this one by 3 over 3. So I've got 5 fifteenths plus 3 fifteenths. I have that many factors. So all together, what are we looking at? 8 fifteenths of root 15. And we have a rational denominator. Whole number. We like it. So we're going to look at a few special cases of multiplication so you know how to handle these when you see them in the homework. First example, I have root 2 on the outside multiplied by root 3 plus root 7. So first of all, can we combine these two things on the inside? No, if we could, it'd be helpful, but we can't. So to get rid of these parentheses, what are we going to have to do? We have to distribute root 2 to each of those terms. So what results when I take root 2 times root 3? We have positive radicand, so we can combine it together underneath. And I'm adding to that, again, root 2 times root 7. 
So we can put the multiplication underneath the same radical. So I'm looking at root 6 plus root 14. Can we combine those? No. Could we break them down into perfect squares and something else? No. It's as far as we can go. And for bar B, I have a binomial times a binomial. So to get rid of those parentheses, what do we have to do? We got a FOIL. So our first term, what are we getting out of there? 2 times 5 will give me 10. 2 times negative 4 will give me negative 8, root 3. Inner, I have positive 5, root 3. And we write the coefficient first, so we're not confused if that number is underneath the radical or not. And last, I've got negative 4, root 3 times root 3. There's lots of different ways that we can write this and represent it, but the same thing's going to happen. So let's simplify. 10 is fine. Combining my two middle terms, how many factors of root 3 do I have? Negative 3 of them. And I'm subtracting 4 times what value evaluates out of here? So I've got square root of 3 times 3, which gives me 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So whenever we have a radical times itself, we get out a rational. We get out a whole number. So I've got 10, I'm subtracting 3 root 3, and I'm also subtracting 12. So we want to simplify as far as we can go. The last two things that we can combine are those constants. So I've got negative 2 minus 3 root 3. Done. Can't combine those two because they're not like terms. And for part C, what do you notice about this one? The setup should look pretty familiar. We're used to kind of going in the opposite direction. But I have the same thing in the same place, but I have opposite signs in those terms. So when I FOIL it out, it should be a difference of squares. So let's see. Let's double check. When I get my first, I have root 3 times root 3, or root 3 squared, first thing squared. And on my outer, I have positive root 3x. Inner, I have negative root 3x, so th those go away. And last, I've got negative root x times root x, or root x squared. So what do we get out of here? My square is undoing the root, so I'm left with 3 minus, what's coming out of there? X. That one turned out to be rational altogether. Kind of cool. And if we can recognize that pattern, we can jump to this step instead of foiling out every single term. And very last, for us to do together, part D. Am I allowed to distribute that square over a sum? Not allowed because why? What does this mean? This thing times itself how many times in total? Two. So we're going to be missing that middle term if we just distribute the square over the sum. Not possible. So we have to go ahead and actually FOIL this out. So what are we getting? First, I've got four. Outer will give me two root five. Inner will give me another 2 root 5. We always have that repeat. And the last, I've got root 5 squared, or root 5 times root 5. So let's combine our like terms. I've got four factors in the middle when we combine those two. And what is my last term evaluating to? Root 5 squared will give me 5 in the end. Combining like terms, again, I've got 4 and 5 together gives me 9. And we can't combine those two again because we don't have like terms. One has a radical, one is just a plain rational number. So go ahead and take those next two, multiply them out, see what you get. So these two cases are special, and we'll see what results as we work through them. So what do we notice about part A? Again, same thing in the same spots but we're differing by a sign. 
So this is going to produce a difference of squares. So let's see what comes out. Root 2 squared, we'll evaluate to 2. And my outer and my inner terms will cancel. And I'm subtracting the last quantity squared. So what comes out? I've got 2 minus a. So again, what about that thing? What is special about it? I had radicals involved in my binomials, but the resulting factor, what kind of result is that? That thing is rational, both parts. And the same story happened for B. We've got the same thing in the same spots, but differing by a sign. So what came out of this one? Nine, outer and inner cancel, minus root 7 squared. So I've got 9 minus 7, which gave me 2. And again, what kind of number is that? That one is a rational number. So whenever we have that pattern, I've got the same things in the same places, but opposite signs. We produce a difference of squares, and it always turns out to be rational. So, note in those last two examples, the results had no radicals. Everything was rational. This happens whenever we multiply expressions like what? Root a plus root b. Same thing in the same spot, but differing by a sign. Produces a difference of squares. So what's going to come out of this guy? First one squared minus the last one squared. And as we simplify and evaluate, I'm squaring a radical. So I'm undoing that. I'm left with the inside. And again, squaring a radical. Undoing it. Left with the inside. I get out a minus b, which is rational. Still rational. So we started with radicals. If we multiply by this thing, if I'm given the square root of a plus the square root of b. If I multiply it by this, I get out something that's rational. So expressions like those are known as conjugates. Conjugates. Very important word that you'll need to be able to recognize and know what it means. So the conjugate, again, just means the same thing in the same place, but with an opposite sign. So this term is the conjugate of the first one, and this term is the conjugate of that one. We have that relationship between the two. Same thing in the same spot, but a different sign in the middle. So we're going to use that to start rationalizing denominators where we have a sum or a difference down there. Because before when we were rationalizing, I had one quantity down there as a whole. We didn't have a sum of two things that I can't combine together. So if we try to multiply by, you know, root 5, if I'm trying to rationalize this, down below as I distribute that, am I getting rid of the radicals? So I would have 2 times root 5 and plus 5. So it took care of my second term, but it introduced another radical over here. And we're trying to get rid of all those radicals. So we need to kind of engineer that a little bit differently. So how do we rationalize that denominator? What is its conjugate? Conjugate of 2 plus root 5 is what? Same thing in the same place, but with an opposite sign. So we can use that. So what does that mean? If I take my original quotient, and I multiply top and bottom by its conjugate, we're going to get out a rational down here. That's been the pattern every single time. So I'm going to group together what comes together so I don't make a mistake, since all of these have subtraction or addition in between there. 3 doesn't need parentheses, but you could put it on there if you really want to. And what comes out in the numerator what am I looking at? So I'm not going to distribute 3 in, because in the end, I want to leave it in factored form. If there are things that can cancel, I can see it easier. 
So I've got 3 times that quantity. And what comes out down below? So I know I'm going to get out a difference of squares. So the first one squared minus the last one squared. And if you're not comfortable using that quicker version, you can FOIL it all out. But it's always going to turn out to be this. So let's simplify that. Up top, we still have 3 times 2 minus root 5. And down below, 2 squared gives me 4. And I'm subtracting off what constant? 5. So 4 minus 5 turns into what? Negative 1. And I don't really like that form. How else could I write that? What else could I do? Whenever I have a negative in a fraction, I can either give it to the bottom or give it to the top. So if I give it to the top, then I just have divided by 1 on the bottom, which is itself. Okay. And if we leave it in the factored form, we can recognize if there's anything to cancel. But we don't have a denominator down there. So we can use that conjugate, very important term, to rationalize denominators that are a little bit ugly. So one more kind of gross example, just so you are aware of it and are exposed to it. Then you can go ahead and try some more. We want to rationalize this quotient. So what is the conjugate of my denominator? The numerator can have radicals all at once. I want the denominator to be rational. So we put the same thing in the same place. And what sign am I going to need? Opposite of whatever's over here. So I need a positive. And whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, because I'm just multiplying by 1, changing what it looks like, not changing it all together. And I'm going to go ahead and group together what comes together, so I don't make a mistake when I'm multiplying. And what do we need to do in order to start simplifying this thing? Up in the numerator, I've got binomial times binomial. So we're going to have to FOIL that. So what are we getting out? Root 3 times root 3 gives me 3 out. Pretty straightforward. And I've got root 3 times root 5. So I'm adding root 15. My inner will give me another factor of root 15. And then my last, I've got root 5 times root 5. So I'm adding a factor of 5 coming out. You can evaluate as you go just like that. It's appropriate. And what are we getting out down below? So I have that difference of squares form. So again, the first thing squared, root 3 times root 3, I'll be left with 3. And I subtract the last thing squared. So the outer and the inner, they cancel. Root 5 times root 5 evaluates out to 5. So let's simplify. I've got 5, 6, 7, 8 up top, plus two factors of root 15. And down below, what am I looking at? Negative 2. Okay. So can I hack away at the 8 and the negative 2 right now? I can't, but why not? Because I still have this little pesky sum in there. So if I'm going to go ahead and cancel out the 2 with something up here, we have to factor it out of both terms. And we do have a factor of 2 that we can take out of both. So let's go ahead and do that. 2 out of 8 will be left with 4. 2 out of 2 will be left with that root 15. And that's all over negative 2. So now we're allowed to cancel out those 2's since everything is being multiplied. And where can I assign that negative so it looks prettier? Up top. So I've got negative quantity 4 plus root 15. Another way that we could report it, if we distribute the negative in, negative 4 minus root 15. They mean the exact same. So go ahead and take those last two tries. Rationalize the denominator. So in the first case, what is the conjugate of the denominator? 
same thing in the same place, but I now need a negative. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. And I'm going to group together what comes together so I know when I have to distribute. And what are we getting out of the top? I'm going to leave the 3 out. Because in the end, if it's factored, we can see if anything will cancel. And down below, I'm going to get that difference of squares. So the first one squared, 7 times 7 gives me 49, minus the last one squared. So root 5 times root 5 evaluates out to 5. We can combine our like terms in the denominator. So nothing changed up here. And that was all over what? 44. And do 3 and 44 share any factors in common? Nope. We're all done there. Not so bad. And for part B, what was the conjugate of this denominator? Same thing in the same place, but opposite side. Whatever I do to the bottom, have to do to the top. And I'll go ahead and group together what's coming together. So in the numerator, I'm not going to distribute 7. I'll keep them on the outside. And what does our denominator turn into? We want it to be rational, like we had in all of these cases. And it is that difference of squares, 4. It's always going to turn out that way. So the first one squared, 1 squared is itself. And I'm subtracting off the last one squared. So root x times root x just gives me an x down there. Now it is rational, and can we cancel these two out? No, but we should always check to make sure there aren't any factors that can, we can remove. Simplified as far as we can go.